instruction. Then we'll continue with the midship sections. So here is your keel plate, which you see here. The bottom plating. Is the bilge plating coming up here? The ship side or hull. This is watertight plate floor in the DB. A solid plate floor in the DB. Here the lightning holes and manholes. Manholes are all elliptical. The notches here are for the longitudinals. So the cuts are made in your plate flow so the longitudinal can pass. These are the ta your tank side brackets. These are the brackets for the bracket floor in between solid plate floor. Now is blue ones are your inner bottom uh, bottom longitudinals. And here are inner bottom longitudinals just below your tank top. These yellow ones are intercostal side girders. And the ones here are the stiffeners which are on your solid plate floors. The yellow line here is a margin line which is connecting all your plate floors. It will spread your stresses. This is the bracket floor brackets which are at the center line. This is the center line girder above the keel. <clears throat> These are your frames which are on your ship side. They're connected to your brackets. These are your knee uh, beams, which are for your twin deck. Beam knee, uh, not the beam knee here. These are the web frames. These are the beam knees, which prevent your racking stress. These are your beams just below your deck plating, the deck longitudinals. The deck plating and the shear, pla shear strake here, the deck plating here, arch combing, twin deck plating, transverse bulkhead here, tank top. Uh, this is a midship, sex, uh, midship section of a general cargo vessel, not bulk carrier. So this is a full connected one now. So you can just uh, visualize uh, the midship sections. Now we'll start with your tanker midship section. We'll see if we have any video here. So we don't have it here. Yeah. 
now your uh, double l tankers basically are uh, these kinds now this here you have a tuck keel which is basically for a convert from a bulk carrier to a double l tanker now this is your double l tanker where you have double l and all your longitudinals are inside so you have the longitudinal inside here you have the stringer plates here now this is your plate floor solid plate floor where you have longitudinal framing and the stiffeners will be inside then you have a longitudinal bulkhead here a center girder here instead of a, you don't have a duck keel but a center girder here which will be above your keel so another one diagram here you have these uh, stringers here and uh, these are also known as cross ties which are connecting which are basically spreading your stresses from the transverse web to the hull frame so the stresses will pass on from your cross ties to your hull this is the plate bracket here the inner bottom the bottom the wing tanks this is your wing tanks here the center tank here and uh, these are your stringer plates here so your shear strake is rounded here so the actual uh, section of vlcc you can see you don't have any center tank you'll have uh, you don't have any uh, center tank so you've got only two wing tanks port and starboard longitudinal bulkheads here you have the stringer plates here in the double hull the longitudinals are there similarly you have a corrugated bulkhead here the transverse stringer plates here and this is your double hull double bottom you don't have any duck keel but a center girder here this is wireframe modeling this is uh, you have uh, longitudinals below here Long longitudinals uh, in the db inner bottom bottom and other other longitudinals are here these longitudinals will prevent your fsc if you are touching the long uh, the oil is touching your longitudinals so the fsc is uh, reduced because the flow will be reduced by the longitudinals these are your stringer plates here now this is a uh, vlcc double hull with a center tank so you have wing tanks and a center tank and double hull so double hull tanker and building dock side ballast width is uh, 2 to 4 meters bottom ballast is 2 to 3 meters height of center tank is 29 meters height of length of center tank is 50 meters now for your single hull i'll just show you a single hull also now this is a small tanker single hull no db here so you have your uh, deck plating you have longitudinals below it air holes in this transverse now the shear strake is straight here it is not rounded this is a hull plating you will have your stringer plating here so the stringer plates are here and these are shown by your face plate and tripping bracket this is a face plate and this is a tripping bracket then this is your bracket here the bottom plating you don't have a center line bulkhead here because your tank is not more than 18.5 meters broad 
so here you have a docking bracket so this docking bracket is a feature for tankers so this is for dry docking because when your ship is sitting on your blocks so the thrust comes on the keel so if there is only one center girder it cannot take so much load so there is a support with a docking bracket in your other tank other midship sections not of bulk carrier container all you don't have a docking bracket but chemical tankers oil tankers vlcc you will have a docking bracket because you don't have a duck keel so the docking bracket is giving extra support during dry dock and this is your bottom transverse you have bottom longitudinals and these are the drain holes here in the bottom longitudinals that's a bracket here so that is your uh, oil tanker which is uh, doesn't have a double hull now we'll come to a vlcc which is single hull here you have a rounded shear strake this is longitudinally framed the oil tanker was uh, combined transfer combined framing system this is longitudinally framed because you have longitudinals below your deck launch launch your launch bulkhead at the bottom plating on your launch bulkhead here the size of the longitudinal will be small on top and increasing in size till the bottom because it has to take that pressure the pressure here will be less the pressure here will be more p is equal to h rho g so the depending on the depth of the tank the longitudinal size will increase these are your girders so you have your uh, deck girders here bottom girders here the docking bracket will be here to support your center line bulkhead now here the center tank is more than 18.5 so you have a perforated center line bulkhead perforated means you have holes in this bulkhead to reduce the free surface effects now this plating will be same as here but they have just to have a clarity they have shown the longitudinals separately as compared to the transfers now this is combined with the transfers so this is your deck transfers that's the bottom transfers and uh, these dotted lines are your flat part stiffeners which are uh, taking the load so these are the stiffeners here and this is the perforation this is no valve but holes here to permit oil to flow from this side to that side during rolling but slowly so the fsc is reduced now here you have cross ties so these are stringer plates also but these are known as cross tie because it becomes like a bridge or a tie between the ship side and the longitudinal transverse so what are the stresses here will transmit here will go to your hull and there will not be any crack so this is your bilge plate that's the bottom plating that's your keel so the keel is uh, e grade i tensile so eh dh is your uh, your uh, steel type is d h is high tensile eh is uh, steel of e i tensile so similarly you have here in the bottom plating and the deck plating also certain section will be eh certain section will be dh eh is your shear strake this is your shear strake as i told you the distance from your neutral axis axis for shear strake that's why this will be this will be your uh, stiffer this will be of more strain taking strength because this is your uh, distance from neutral axis is maximum so that's your vlcc 3d section this we have already done so now we come back to the midship section of double hull and we'll start doing the theory now so oil tankers of length over 120 meters are required to be double hulled as per marpol rules so panamax aframax swiss max lcc ulcc are all double hulled
taking class. I'm taking class. So the primary reason providing two hulls is to prevent your contact of cargo oil with external environmental in case of structural damage to the hull. The center tank is used for storage of cargo oil and the wing tanks or segregated ballast tanks or SPTs are used for carrying seawater ballast. SPTs are epoxy coated so that you have uh, no corrosion there. And then you'll have uh, longitudinal stiffeners uh, towards the wing tanks and not on the center cargo oil tank. So that is to prevent any oil clingage on the longitudinals. You have uh, the longitudinal ins inside your double hull. Clingage means sticking of the oil. Just write the word here. Correct word is clingage. Now, double bottom space is also used for water ballast and the stiffness on the inner bottom plating are always towards the double bottom space. And you have a deep web frame, which you have seen, at every frame space to provide transfer strength. Now, basically, web frame, basically, if I come to the framing part, uh, what is your framing? I'll just show you because uh, maybe you're not conversant with what kind of framing is there. So just to revise what kind of framing is there, there are three kinds of framing. You have your transverse framing is this one in your small vessels. That is transverse framing here, no longitudinals, only your girders. And then you have your uh, longitudinal framing here, where you have longitudinals plus transverses. So here you have a full ring here. So this ring is known as your web frame. This is connecting in the bottom transverse and this side. The bottom transverse, side transverse, deck transverse. So the distance between the two rings, this ring and that ring, is between 3 to 5 meters. So 5 meters is the distance for VLCC and small tank the distance between the rings is 3 meters. Intermediate ships are between 3 to 5 meters between the rings. So you have longitudinals on the side, longitudinal on the bottom, longitudinal on the transverse, under deck longitudinals, plus you have girders. So this is your longitudinal framing and the distance between your various rings or uh, your uh, web, web rings will be three to five meters. So the stringers are, uh, uh, the thing is uh, three to four, four frame space in order to provide your transfer strength. Now again, your frame spacing. So the frame spacing, uh, just for your revision part, what is frame spacing? Because uh, again, you've forgotten about your second mates. I will just tell you what is your frame spacing. Yeah. yeah. Basically, this is your forward perpendicular, this is forward collision bulkhead, this is aft collision bulkhead, this is aft perpendicular. So the blue areas are your panting areas. And your panting areas, the distance between the frame is not more than 0.61 meters or 61 centimeter. This is the pounding region, so there's an imaginary bulkhead here, imaginary line here between 20% uh, to 30% of LBP from forward perpendicular to aft, this line. So between this line and forward collision bulkhead, which is here, the distance between frame is maximum 70 centimeters or 0.7 meters. In between here, the distance between frame is 1 meter. You studied that your collision bulkhead is 
5% to 7.5% of LBP from forward perpendicular towards the arc. So here, yeah, this is your forward collision bulkhead. Regarding aft collision bulkhead, those dimensions are not there in the classification society. So we are talking of the frame space. Spacing between the frames, depending on the region they are in. So the longitudinal stiffeners are welded to the web frames. Stiffeners are basically the strength members which are fitted to the structure. Just explain what are the stiffeners are. Now suppose this is the bulkhead here, this is the horizontal stringer in front of it. And then these are the vertical stiffeners. So these are the strength members. So these are stiffening the bulkhead. So that is stiffener. So the stif stiffeners, uh, stringers are provided on the transverse bulkhead again to provide strengthening. So the stringers will provide uh, if they are transverse, then they'll give transverse strength. If they're fore and aft, they'll provide longitudinal strength. So 1992, MAPOL was amended to make it mandatory for tankers of 5,000 dead weight and more ordered after 6 July 93 to be fitted with double hull. So that was an alternate design approved by IMO. So the double hull was for all tankers above 5,000 dead weight. Now your use of E-grade steel in tankers is uh, for uh, location of stringer plate, shear streak, rounded gunwale. They're thicker than 15 mm. Or build streak, deck streak in way of longitudinal bulkhead. They're greater than 25 mm. For the main deck plating, bottom plating, upper streak of longitudinal bulkhead, keel, they're greater than 40 mm. Now, for your tank spaces, these have longitudinally framed DB. Longitudinal frame DB, that means they have longitudinals and they have transverse flows because all your flows are transverse. And the longitudinal frame deck supported by deck transverse. The longitudinally framed side shell, inner hull, longitudinal bulkhead are all supported by transverse webs aligned with the transverse floor and deck transverse. Now that means the diagram which I had shown you here, this one, they're all aligned. Aligned that means this is same, the ring is same. So the top is aligned with the bottom, the port side along with the starboard side. So that is the full ring is formed like this. So the alignments means they're on the same plane. Now we come to the longitudinally framed. Uh, what is framing? Yeah, longitudinal framing, that means you have longitudinals on under the deck, in the tank top, on the longitudinal bulkheads, you have longitudinals. And they all have greater scantlings since they have been stiffening the highly stressed flanges of the hull structure. Scantlings are the various, uh, scantling spelling is wrong. Scantling, scantlings, okay. So scantlings are the various uh, ship construction members of various sizes. So at the side shell, the upper longitudinals have at least the least scantlings, the least size. And they increase till the bottom, as I told you, because of the water pressure and the oil pressure. The top longitudinal size will be less, the bottom will be more, till your bilge is reached. So that is longitudinal framing of oil tankers. So these are the corrugated uh, bulkheads here. 
and then the gusset plate here, the deck girder, flat bar stiffener, elevation at the line center line. So this is that kind of docking bracket here, flat stiffener here. So if this is the elevation at the center line of the tank. Similarly, the bottom you can see oil tight bulkhead here, the plate bracket through your bulkhead, the tripping bracket here. Now for product carriers, your deck longitudinals are fitted above the deck to flush internal tank surface. So normally, which we have done, chemical tankers, product carriers, your deck longitudinals are fitted above the deck to provide a flush surface inside for tank cleaning. So very important feature of longitudinal framing is that your longitudinal will be continuous from forward to aft. So you have to cut three notches in your bulkheads to, for your longitudinals to pass through. So the continuity has to be maintained. They cannot have a break, otherwise the ship will break at that point. So high tensile steel longitudinals are to be continuous irrespective of the length. It can be 300 meter length, so the longitudinals will be from forward collision bulkhead to aft collision bulkhead. Continuity will be there. Now for your flows and transfers. So you have the three types of flows. One is watertight floor, one is solid floor, another is bracket floor. So they support the bottom and inner bottom. Then you have transverse plate webs supporting your side shell and inner side shell longitudinals, the deck longitudinals and the longitudinal bulkheads stiffening. Now the transverses are built on a plate web and heavier uh, flat face bar. The depth being adequate to allow sufficient material to pass through the longitudinals as we, as we have seen. And within the double hull space, they form solid web and supported by horizontal stringers. So you have these horizontal stringers here inside your double hull. Even here, if you see, you have horizontal stringers here in the double hull. So in the wing tanks, they support the deck longitudinals and uh, four and a half bulkhead longitudinals, these webs. Now for your bottom girders. So deck center line girder, which we have seen that blue one required in the DB, which is uh, with which your heavy keel plate will constitute for immediate structure. And here your docking loads are transmitted when your vessel is placed on the keel block. So there your Docking bracket is required to support the center line girder when your vessel is docking. Now your bulkhead spacing throughout your cargo tank spacing is determined by your length of your cargo tank. So MAPOL requires that the length of each cargo tank shall not exceed greater than 10 meters or a length expressed as percentage of ship's length and is depending on the number of longitudinal bulkheads fitted. And the minimum distance from ship side to the outer longitudinal bulkhead. So tankers will have two or more longitudinal bulkheads, which will have wing and center tank lengths up to 20% of ship's length. Coffer dams may be formed when two adjacent oil tank transverse bulkheads are at least 760 mm apart. And these are required at the ends of cargo spaces. So the coffer dams. Uh, are basically supporting, uh, is preventing the direct uh, touch with the cargo. So they're providing that space where your leakage can be absorbed, leakage can be collected. So your, for aft in your collision, uh, uh, for if suppose you have any hole there in the bulkhead, it will not go to the engine room there or not go to the accommodation space. So there you have an oil tight transverse bulkhead of at least 760 mm apart required at the ends of the cargo space forward and aft. So after you have a pump room and that can be considered as a 
coffee dam so in chemical tankers if you see you don't have a pump room but you have a coffee dam because the pumps are framo pumps in each tank and the ballast pump is in the engine room so in the pump room you don't have anything otherwise in tankers you have a pump room and that acts like a coffee dam also so pump room fitted at aft end of the cargo space and a ballast tank fitted at the forward end each of the compartment can be accept in lieu of a coffer dam so coffer dam will you will also find coffer dams in your engine room area between your accommodation and oil tank areas or between two cargo uh, two uh, fuel oil tanks you will also have coffer dam now transverse bulkheads which pass from port to starboard these are oil tight the vertical stiffeners are fitted corrugated plating is provided with corrugations either running vertical or horizontal the horizontal stringers support your vertical stiffeners and corrugations and vertical webs support any horizontal corrugations so these are vertical corrugations so your transverse bulkhead with vertical corrugations here these are your uh, stringer plates here so these are your uh, transverse corrugated bulkhead with or uh, transverse corrugated bulkhead the horizontal corrugations so these corrugations are horizontal so this further support is provided by vertical center line web which is a rule deeper than on one side of the bulkhead than the other unless the tank is very long and the web may be symmetrical on either side of the bulkhead now the longitudinal bulkheads are oil tight so they'll be either having stiffeners or they'll have corrugated with corrugations running either horizontal or vertical center line bulkhead may be fitted conventional stiffing is arranged stiffening is arranged vertically when the side framing is vertical and arranged longitudinally when side framing is longitudinally framed so this is a longitudinally corrugated bulkhead corrugations are running for and aft so that's a longitudinally corrugated bulkhead from view from top vertical webs are fitted to the longitudinal bulkhead when this is corrugated or longitudinally framed corrugation corrugated longitudinal bulkheads are only permitted when your ship's length is less than 200 meters otherwise corrugated longitudinal bulkheads are not permitted so this is your vertical web this is your longitudinal and this is the bottom web so that's your oil tankers so now we we have remaining is lpg and lng so we start with the lpg carriers so petroleum hydrocarbon products like your propane and butane or mixtures of both have been categorized by oil industry as liquefied petroleum gas so they are used in your domestic in your kitchens and industrial purpose so when they have to be transported they are pressurized into liquid form and transported in both conditions you require pressure and temperature to be maintained without posing life to threat for your threat to life environment and cargo so at least one of the following conditions to be complied with for transportation of lpg the gas should be pressurized at tam- ambient temperature ambient temperature means outside temperature so the gas should be fully refrigerated second type is fully refrigerated at boiling point so the boiling point can be from minus 30 to minus 48 
so this is fully refrigerated condition for lpg carriers the third will be semi refrigerated so your temperature is reduced and your pressure is also not that high as compared to fully pressurized other gases which you have ammonia ethylene propylene these are all transported in liquefied form in lpg carriers ethylene will have a lower boiling point of minus 140 Therefore, it is carried in either semi-refrigerated or fully refrigerated conditions. So, this is a fully uh, pressurized LPG carrier, and the pressure here will be 17.5 bar. These are small ones, which are 2,000 to 3,000 meter cubes. So, the tanks are all on cradles here. And this is a fully refrigerated uh, LPG carrier. Now, what are the brief requirements of IGC code? One is your damage limitations to cargo and ship survival in case of collision or grounding, safety arrangements for this kind of ship, cargo containment and cargo handling, what kind of material of construction for containment and carriage, what are the requirements for cargo loading and discharging, what are the fire protection requirements. pollution control requirements usage of cargo as machinery fuel because nowadays you have as per nx6 more cleaner air required uh, cleaner fuel required so usage of cargo as ships machinery fuel provision for thermal expansion and contraction if provided so lpg ship cargo requirements are that you have three criteria one is fully pressurized and Amb at ambient temperature fully refrigerated at boiling point or semi refrigerated but with reduced temperature and elevated pressure so your other auxiliaries are uh, well insulated and refrigerated lpg tank compressor room with uh, compressors and refrigeration plant for your padding you will have a nitrogen bank as well as an inert gas generator with dryer system so the moisture content will be less than 1% cargo temperature and environmental data monitoring system all this will be required in lpg carriers then your tank atmosphere and temperature data monitoring system and cargo containment system which is very important in lpg carriers so basically your cargo containment system you can divide lpg carriers into integral tanks integral tanks are tanks which form a primary structure of the ship and are influenced by the load coming on the hull structure so here lpg is to be carried in condition close to atmospheric uh, pressure so for example butane then there are no requirements for expansion and contraction of tank structure because that is part of the ship itself so that is integral then you have independent tanks independent tanks that means they are separate from the ship itself it can be tank kept on top pressure tanks or in the tank tank in a tank which is not part of the hull So now independent tanks these are self supporting in nature and they do not form an integral part of the hull so they do not uh, contribute to your overall strength of the hull and uh, therefore these independent tanks are into three types one is type a type a is fully refrigerated the one we had seen the diagram here this is a type a so this one is type a fully refrigerated
so these are used for traditional method of ship structure design lpg is a near atmospheric conditions the design pressure here is less than 700 millibar so these ships are from 10000 to 1 lakh meter cube tanks are into prismatic independent type a category with top side sloped to reduce your fsc and bottom corner slope to suit for the build structure there is foam insulation used here so in this you have the prismatic uh, type you can say uh, the sloping here then the water ballast here and uh, you have a primary barrier the cladding is there the whole space is empty space for leakage containment then insulation here and that's your duct key show you another diagram here so here you have your tank dome here the secondary barrier is your ballast here that's your primary barrier this is the primary barrier insulation foam insulation here ships hold hold space here is empty space for containing a leakage and then you have your anti flotation tops or chocks because this is independent tank it can float free if your uh, gas which is compressed to a liquid here so the, if it leaks out the liquid if this will start flowing floating free so to control that you have anti flotation chocks here that's your duct keel and then you have a central line bulkhead to reduce your free surface effect here so this is your self supporting independent prismatic tank for lpg the type a this is a type a vessel fully refrigerated so you have water ballast here water ballast on top so your 3000 uh, small tankers uh, lpg carriers are uh, fully pressurized these ones between 3000 2000 to 3000 meter cubes these are cylindrical tanks here a semi pressurized will be around 16000 meter cubes lpg carriers and type a will be up to 1 lakh this is uh, fully refrigerated lng you will have with membrane tanks about 1 lakh 35000 uh, meter cubes lng carriers type b with uh, kevnor moss will be about 1 lakh 40000 meter cubes so this is type a that is fully refrigerated so the general arrangement of an lpg ship is same like a oil tanker the cargo tanks are spread over a certain length forward and aft of your midships and the machinery and superstructure at the aft the foxel is fitted at the bow so as to prevent green uh, waters to come on deck ballast water cannot be carried in cargo tanks hence the spaces for ballast are provided by showing up by incorporating double hull spaces and then you have bilge and upper wing tanks Now the most notable and distinguishing feature of type a is that it will have a secondary barrier and the secondary barrier feature is it should contain leakage for at least 15 days and this secondary barrier will complete uh, will provide a complete barrier of capacity that is sufficient to contain entire tank volume at any angle of heel plus the secondary barrier comprises of spaces in the ship's hull now in most cases the tanks are subdivided along the center line by liquid tight bulkhead which extends to the underside of the dome projecting through the deck through which you have access and piping connections this is the diagram which i had shown you so this is a center line uh, bulkhead here which will extend till the top so this will reduce your free surface effects
so the tank sits on insulated bearing block so that the surfaces are accessible for inspection and located by anti roll and pitch keys to control your expansion and contraction taking place related to the ship structure so you have this kind of structure here anti flotation chocks and anti roll things also so that will provide anti roll and then you will have anti flotation so that it will not float free so we will have a break now and we'll continue with for the lpg after this okay 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 sir okay